In this video, we're going to take a look at the fracture object. The fracture object is another one of our MoGraph objects, similar to MoText in a lot of ways, and especially the way we typically use it. Uh, and we'll be seeing a couple of examples how we can animate 3D text uh, using the fracture object. Okay, the most common way we use the fracture object is by taking a spline, perhaps we brought in from Illustrator, uh, placing it in extrude, placing that extrude inside a fracture. Okay, we would have done the exact same thing had we started with uh, a text spline in Cinema 4D, placing it in an extrude object to ex give it depth, turn it into geometry, and then placing that in a fracture object so that we can add MoGraph to it. Okay. So once we've placed our extrude inside a fracture object, which is, as I mentioned, another one of our uh, MoGraph generators here, we can go ahead and add an effector. So I'll go ahead and select the plane effector. Now, I did have my fracture object selected when I created that plane effector, so it did go ahead and apply the plane effector um, inside the effector list here. If you're inside your fracture object looking at the effectors tab and you don't see that plane effector there, go ahead and just click and drag it and drop it inside of the effector list here. Now this plane effector is our most basic uh, MoGraph effector here. And a lot of our effectors work very similarly. We have a coordinates tab where we can you know, move the position, we can scale this effector or rotate it. And we don't use these all that often. Okay, because as we'll talk about, we, we work with uh, fields inside of our fall off tab. Okay, inside our effector tab is where we find specific options for that effector. And since our plane effectors are more generic, basic effector we have, we don't see a whole lot in here. Um, the random effector has some nice properties for us to work with, uh, along with the sound effector as well. We'll see a lot of those options here. The parameter tab is where we tell this effector what we want it to do. By default, there's a value of 100 centimeters on the y-axis, so we could go ahead and zero that out. And really what we're doing here with our position, scale, and rotation options here is offsetting our object or objects from its initial position. So when I set this y position to something like you know, 250 centimeters, I am moving it 250 centimeters up from where it was initially. Same type of thing if I add some value on my X position. I'm moving this 200 centimeters along the positive X axis from where this object was initially. And we can use any combination of X, Y, and Z we want. Okay. I think for this one, uh, we'll do, you know, probably something on the Y axis. We could also do something similar with scale where we can scale this along the X axis, the Y axis, or even the Z axis. Okay, and the Z is kind of the depth axis, so it's a little bit difficult to see here. Okay, typically though, when we are working with scale, we want to scale our objects uniformly. So we want to check uniform scale, and then we can set this down to whatever value we want. Note a value of one will make our object disappear. And that's because if we were to create a cube very quickly, the default scale value of an object is one. And as I mentioned with the position, we are offsetting um, the position, okay, changing its position by this many from its original value. The same is true for scale. We are changing that object's original scale value by negative one. And if our original scale value is one, one and negative one make zero. And that's why our object disappears, okay? So let's just get rid of that just for right now so we can focus on rotation, okay? Rotation works pretty much the same way. All right, any combination here, and we're rotating on the heading pitch or bank axis uh, from its original value. All right, now you may be noticing that regardless of what I do, it's happening, getting a, or it's getting applied to our object uh, the exact same amount and evenly. And so it's almost like we were just performing these transforms directly on our object. Okay, and if that's all we're doing, that is, that is not all that interesting. Okay, so uh, to change that, to change how this effector gets applied, that's where the fall off tab comes in. Okay, before we get to that, let's just come in here and set the scale to say negative one. So our 
letters will disappear right now. And now we can go to the fall off tab. This fall off tab is what allows us to control the strength of the effector and how it gets applied to our fracture object. So we can do this with a number of different objects and shapes, ranging from a box, a cylinder, uh, or the one we typically use most with text, the linear field. Okay, and so why don't we go ahead and create that. The linear field is what allows us to apply this effector. I'm sorry, uh, the, yeah, the effector to our fracture object. Okay, now you may be noticing that my fracture object is being treated still like a single object. And the whole point of using a fracture object or, or MoGraph in this manner is so that we can have it work on the individual letters. So we can animate the individual letters. And because of the way we have this set up, we do have to change an option here in our fracture. We need to go to the object mode and switch its mode from straight to either explode segments or explode segments and connect. I prefer to use explode segments but if things start to look a little bit strange, then I will try explode segments and connect. Okay, so now when we move our linear field, we can see that it is working on the individual letters here. Okay, great. And it's actually this linear field that we will typically animate. Okay, we would animate its position, scale or, or even rotation, just like we would any other object. All right. I also want to point out it's important not to move your fracture objects or even the plane effector itself and instead work on just moving or animating the linear field. Okay, there might be times when you want to move the fracture uh, or perhaps the, the effector itself, but more times than not, we just want to be working with the, the field. Okay, now before I actually animate this field, there's a couple other things I want to do to it. All right. I want to start by going into the field setting here, okay, and working with the length. Because right now, this fracture object, the plane effector is getting applied essentially one letter at a time, right? And so that's kind of boring. I want there to be a little bit more overlap between the animation here. And so I will just increase the length. The longer my effector is, the more letters it will work on at once. All right, so now we can see I get a lot more overlap, a little bit more interesting movement. Okay, so let's go ahead and animate this. I'm going to make sure my time slider is at frame zero, pull my linear field all the way to the left until my text completely disappears, come in here and keyframe the X position. Okay, once I've done that, I will move my time slider to say frame 50. Move my linear field all the way across until my text is fully in place. And keyframe my linear field again. All right, now if I scrub back and forth, I should have my animation. Okay, now if we actually play back this animation, we'll see that it's still pretty stiff it's still pretty um, unnatural and that's because in the linear field in the remapping tab this effector is being applied linearly right there's no ease in no ease out uh, my keyframes certainly have ease in and ease out but my effector is still being applied linearly to each of my letters right nice straight line there okay so we can come in and adjust that by working with the contour here now there are several contour modes that uh, we can, can use. My favorite tends to be quadratic because it's a little bit of uh, a cheat. It's, a, it's an easier one to work with, but we do have a lot of flexibility with it. Okay, so if I take my curve value and set it negative, you can see now my text is coming in a lot faster at the very end, okay? It's essentially speeding up all right, and coming into ending very, very fastly. It's starting slowly, ending quickly. If I go the other way with this, I'm going to end up with a lot slower 
animation where there's a bit more of an ease in. So depending on what I'm looking for, oftentimes I can get pretty close with my quadratic contour mode. Okay. We also have step. All right. And really the way to think about these is interpolation, just like the interpolation between our keyframes. Okay. We are interpolating what's happening from when this effector starts to get applied to when it's been fully applied to our fracture object. And so we can work with this just like we would the interpolation between two keyframes. Okay, so step, right, just like our step interpolation. And this gives us a little bit of a um, stop motion look, which I think is pretty cool. And you can increase the number of steps here. Step is also very similar to quantize. In fact, in a lot of situations, they are the exact same. Okay, and lastly, we have curve. Now, curve is just like if we're working with keyframes here. Okay, so I can select a point, I can adjust the interpolation on it, work with its handle, and get exactly what I want. All right, so we have a lot of control. And in fact, if I do something like this, I'm pretty much getting the exact same thing I was getting with quadratic. Okay, my remapping here is very, very similar. And so that's why I typically stick with quadratic because more often than not, I either want to have a you know faster in or a slower in. And I can do that right away with quad, uh, quadratic. Okay, but for times when we need extra control, we want to come in here and use our curve mode. Okay, so that's a look at our, our remapping section here. And really, that's going to about do it for... Uh, talking about our plane effector and working with our linear field. One last thing I do want to talk about, though, is another situation uh, where we use the fracture. OK, so this in this particular setup, we have one spline and one extrude. And because of that, we had to use the explode segments mode in order to get it to treat the letters individually. OK, in my second example, all right, looks the exact same, but each letter is in its own extrude. Okay, and so now when I apply this effector, okay, and the mode is set to the original straight option, what we should see is pretty much the same thing. Okay, so with this fracture, I didn't have to switch the mode here because there are already multiple objects inside of the fracture. OK, so that's a look at the two most common ways we use the fracture when it comes to animating text, uh, 3D text. So I hope you guys found that useful and stay tuned for the next video.